Hello, my name is Ederson Oliveira and I'll be presenting this video for thenandhere.com and in this video I'll be talking about the text skin object. Uh, but before, before I explain what the text skin object is, let me tell you a little story when I used to do to build skins for clients. We used to have a problem when we were dealing with uh, a Dr. Took site that had more than, than one language. If the skin had any sort of text embedded into the skin, when we move from one language to the next one, that text would have to be translated as well. Now, we were not able to do that uh, dynamically. So what we had to do back then, I, we had to create copies, copies of, of the same skin, just replacing the, the names and translating the text within the skin so it could fit well for the for the other languages. I'm not sure if this is new or not, but I came across the text skin object some some months ago while I was doing some research and it the text skin object comes to address that problem. It will allow to it will allow uh, the designer to create dynamic text content within the skin. So depending on which language you are seeing the site at that point, you can create resources that will translate those texts uh, to the other language as well. Now, the default minimal extropy skin that comes with .NET 2 Community Edition, it's a good example to explore a little bit uh, more about the text skin object. And in this, this case here, as you can see at the top, there is an American flag, a Canadian flag, and a Brazilian flag. So each flag is represented in a different language. We have English for the first one, French for the second one, and Portuguese for the third one. So as you can see at the top, the URL changes slightly when you move from one to the next one. Now, the objective of this video is not to show how to install multiple languages in the .NET site. There is another video which I'll put the link that will show how to add multiple languages to your .NET site. So for us to explore a little bit more about the text skin object, we're going to open the minimal XRP index skin that comes with .NET Nook. And in that file, it does have one text skin object added to it, which is the one that takes care about the you are here text. So I'm going to, I'm going to open that file. I have to browse to the root folder. I'm, I'm running the site on my local development environment. So I go to the root folder of my site and then I go to portals to default to skins and that's minimal extropy and the skin file that has been used is called index.asx which I have opened here. Now here's a skin.asx at the top of the file amongst many uh, many registration many uh, object registrations we also have the many control registration we also have the text so here is the the control that needs to be registered so we can use the text skin object so here's the registration we have to add that always but again we are looking at the minimum XRP which has it already and if we scroll down we will be able to find the DNN text tag, which is right here. And then I want to bring your attention to two properties. One is text and the other one is resource key. Text basically is used whenever the whenever there is no resource for that language. So it needs to default to some sort of text. So in case there is no resource created, then this control will will default to this text. Now, the second property is the resource key. The resource key is the entry in the resource file, is the name of the entry in the resource file that the text will be stored. So let's let's go back to the site files and, and have a look at the, the folder structure of the minimum extropy. We can see that there is a folder called the app local resources. This folder is necessary uh, so we can store the resource file inside of it. 
Now we have multiple resource files inside this file and one of those is called index.asx.resx and this is the name that uh, that correlates to the skin that we are using. The skin is called index.ascx and the resource file is called index.ascx.resx. So again, we need the folder with the name app local resource and we need the file, the resource file with the same name as the, as the skin file added.resx. Now let's have a look at uh, this file. Let's let's open this file. So here we have the file open. We just have the resource key breadcrumb.txt and then we have the text which is you are here. Now if we look back again at the folder there are no other resource files related to the index.ascx skin. There's just one. So if we go back to the site and if we flip to Canadian, which is French here and Portuguese, the text is always coming the same because there are no resources for those languages here created in the in the skin folder. Now this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna create two copies of this uh, file, the resource file, one that will be French, the other one that will be in Portuguese. So we're just gonna copy this here and copy another one. Continue. Now we need to rename those resources. I mean, they cannot stay just with this copy here. So to rename them, we need to add the language code to each one of those. So if I flip to Canadian, uh, which will be the French version, at the top we see that there is a code, there is a language code here. Let's copy this language code, which is fr and then dash ca. And then let's use that to rename our French file. So go back to the files and let's use this one here. So let's remove this copy. So it needs to be uh, index.ascx dot then the, the language code dot resx. So that will be the French one and the Portuguese one will be, let's have a look at here at the URL. Okay, so the Portuguese one will be dot will be pt dash br. So let's copy this. Let's go back to the site files and let's rename this file as well. So dot that's the language code. Okay. Now we have to open both files and perform the translation and, and translate the text. So let's do that now. Now I have, I have opened both of them. I'm going to do the translation of the French one and the Portuguese one and I'm gonna save both. Now I'm gonna refresh the site to see how it looks like. So let's try Canadian, no translation and Portuguese, nothing has happened here. So I think that might be related to the accents in the text. Let's just do a quick trial here. Let's remove the accents just for a second in the French as well. And let's save this and try to refresh there again. Okay, so now after refreshing, it's coming up. So it seems to be related, the problem seems to be related to the accents. Now, there might be a way to to fix that by changing the encoding format of the file. So let's go back to the editor. Let's put the accents back, both are back, and let's save this file as Let's change the encoding format to UTF-8. Let's save this. And let's do the same thing for the French one. Let's save. Let's change the encoding format, save as, and then change to UTF-8. Now, I'm not sure if this is a problem that I, that just, I'm the only one having it. But again, I had to save in a different format. Now I'm gonna go back to the site, refresh the other languages. And yes, now we have we have the accents. So basically, this is this is how you're gonna go about using the text skin object in in your skins in .NET Nook to make sure that the text uh, that you can translate the text within the skin without having to create multiple skins for each language. Thank you very much. Bye for now.